like to welcome you to our regular board meeting this evening. We have been involved in a special board meeting from five until this time. So uh, we're thankful that you're here and glad that we can start this evening uh, with Mr. Ron, Dr. Ron Godbolt with Word of Truth Ministry to lead us in our invocation, which will be started by, start, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. If you will, all please rise. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. You bless us to see. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for this meeting and coming together as citizens. And we pray that you would give us the wisdom as you gave Solomon that he could lead his people. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom you're going to give these leaders of this community that they work together in your name gets all the glory. We thank you for all that you've done and how you continue to bless us and keep us and protect us from all harm and evil. For that, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. And Dr. Godbolt, I hope you're going to continue to be a part of Hope Mills, even though I know that you were relocating our church. Yes, ma'am. I'm committed to that. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Easter sunrise service. Yes, I'm on board. <laughs> thank you, sir. Right. At this time, do we have any additions or deletions to our agenda? If not, do I have a motion to approve our agenda? Motion to approve. Have a motion to have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. At this time, I'm going to ask the board if they will go down in front of our desk. We have a special presentation this evening, and I would like to read this, and then I will follow. I'll come down with them. As many of you know, Miss Adams, our town manager, is retiring. She's worked in municipal government for nearly 30 years, wearing many hats and serving many roles. She began as a deputy town clerk tax collector for the town of Pine Bluff, North Carolina from 1992 to 2001. In 2001, she joined the town of Carthage, serving as the town clerk development administrator. She was also appointed deputy finance officer in 2008. Melissa was hired as town clerk for the town of Hope Mills in March 2011. April 2012, she was appointed Interim Human Resources Administrator and served in that capacity until September 2013. In January 2017, she was appointed Town Manager, the first female to serve in that role. Melissa has had many accomplishments during her time in municipal government. She's certified municipal clerk since 2002, a master municipal clerk since March 2009. She's a notary public. She's had numerous famous emerging management classes. She served as a mentor for new clerks from 2011 to 2016 with the International Institute for Municipal Clerks. She was appointed to the Board of Directors for the North Carolina League of Municipalities in October 2014 and served until September 2017. She served on the Legislative Committee, the Membership Committee, the Finance Committee, the Mentor Program, State Certif Certification Committee, Program and Education Committee. 2016 the IIMC Site Selection Committee and the NCAMC Executive Board for the North Carolina Association of Municipal Clerks. She was also appointed and served as the District Director for NCAMC District 7, 2012, 2014, and 2014 and 2015. She served as a member volunteer representative for local government, federal credit union, and the UNC School of Government Municipal Administration course she took in, in April of 2018. The other thing that I would just like to say is that for me, this is a bittersweet moment because when I became mayor, uh, it's when Melissa and I sort of joined forces together in town of Hope Mills. I'm greatly going to miss her. It's because of many things that she's mentored me and helped me as far as knowing what a mayor's supposed to do because you don't come with a, a box of, of rules and ideas of what to do when you're elected in official capacity that you've never done before. 
So I appreciate all that she's done for me and all that she continues to do uh, in her role as an advocate for the town of Hope Mills. We have a special presentation tonight. She's going to be with us till March 31st, and there is actually a retirement celebration on that day. But tonight we thought since this is, would be her official last board member, we wanted to recognize her for all the things that she's done for our board and for the town of Hope Mills and for our staff. So, Melissa, if you'll come forward. Also, we have with us this evening Mr. Bill Zell, and he will be our interim town manager, Mr. Zell. So if you'll stand so that people can see you, recognize this is, he will be, uh, he starts officially uh, this evening, and he will be here with Melissa to be trained until um, March uh, 31st, and then he'll assume full responsibility. Thank you for coming this evening, sir. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Next, I have a special proclamation. Whereas the Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary conducted its 106th year of volunteer service to America, whereas year after year the organization continues to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by maintaining memorials to their service and sharing their history with our nation's youth, so that what our nation's veterans have done for America will not be forgotten. Whereas Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary supports the troops currently deployed overseas, 
whereas the 470,000 members represent families of those who have served or are currently on foreign soil protecting our freedom. Whereas members volunteer nearly 1 million hours in Veterans Affairs medical centers and other hospitals throughout this country. Whereas the organization provides awards and scholarships to students based on their expression of patriotism through art, speech, and volunteerism. Whereas the 2021 National President Sandra Onswelder is rallying VFW auxiliary members behind her theme, honoring our mission to serve veterans. And whereas March 31st, 2021 will be a time to celebrate her visit to North Carolina. Now, therefore, I do hereby, hereby proclaim March 31st, 2021, honoring our mission to serve Veterans Day in recognition of the National President Sandra Onswetter and all members of the VFW Auxiliary for their outstanding volunteer service to veterans and their families, to the town of Hope Mills and our great country. And we do have several uh, uh, vet, uh, veteran foreign wars auxiliary uh, units here in Hope Mills, one at the 1067, the 106 30 and one at 670 both are very active and uh i personally uh have been involved not because i was a spouse but because i was a daughter uh and a granddaughter and i have brothers and nephews that are military attached so it is a very worthwhile organization and those of you that uh who have spouses that have uh have a reason to join and, and are qualified to join, I would highly recommend it because it does a great deal of service for Hope Mills and for our veterans in Hope Mills. Next, I have a brief update by Parks and Rec Director Marco Morrison on the design bill for a freestanding restroom at the Thomas Campbell Oakman Chapel. And I'll turn it over to uh, Lamarco Morrison. Good evening. Um, First of all, I would like to say that's perhaps the shortest deadline I've ever been given, but I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, you all should have gotten hot off the press. Um, yeah. Actually got it this morning. Um, a conceptual drawing that shows a couple of elevations and a floor plan, um, hopefully. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll talk. I, I, I wish we had a. Um, I wish we had a um, overhead. We need to get one of those, um, Drew, um, so I can actually show the people what we're talking about sometimes. But um, but I'll do a presentation yeah. next time around. I'll do a presentation next time around, and I'll show these elevations. Mm -hmm. um, but what you have in front of you is very very preliminary. Um, um, I met with a couple of design build um, teams this week. Um, be, uh, but the, the sketch is because I want to get a rough magnitude um, of order, uh, which is a preliminary cost, square foot cost, before we actually got into it, just to give you all an idea of what this restroom is going to cost so that you're very much aware of what the design piece is going to be and what the construction piece is going to be. Um, so um, we, we did make that happen this week, but before we get into that, I just want to let you know the steps. Um, I went through first just to make sure I was on the right track, make sure that, um, you know, that was following building codes because there was a lot of information and a little bit of confusion about what was required based on um, the building, the occupancy, et cetera. And so um, the first thing I did um, last Monday was met with the chief building inspector, um, Kenny Tatum, and, um, you know, went through what the building is going to be used for. It's going to be an assembly. Um, um, which is A3 building code um, of 90, I think it's 90 people occupancy. And so that pretty much dictates what the size of the restroom is going to be, et cetera. And so um, with that, um, we know that we have to have a restroom that would, would be adequate for 45 men and 45 women. Um, it does require, j just to be consistent, it's going to require two water closets or, or two stalls, if you will, per. So two for men, two for women, one of each, which, which will have to be ADA um, compliant. Um, has to have at least one laboratory or water fountain. Um, and as far as the ADA requirements, um, there's a little bit of confusion on whether it can be a standalone restroom or whether it can be attached. So it could be a standalone building from what I'm told, but it's still going to have to have a ramp from the from the um, the chapel, um, which the drawing shows, and it's going to have to be covered. So essentially, it, you can look at that as an attachment, if you will, because it has to be a covered walkway, elevated, 
um, and um, with, the, with the access from the building. Um, in addition to that, because we're going to be used use the outside area as a plaza, then um, the drawing also shows a ramp to the, the building from the other side. Um, both exits have to be ADA, um, both exits have to be ADA compliant as well. Um, and um, just one other thing. So those are the ADA requirements. Um, um, so Thursday of last week, I met with um, um, one of two design build firms. The first one is JCE um, Consulting Engineers, which is half the team of um, 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 the design build team, um, what is it, Commercial Builders? Yeah, Commercial Building Incorporated. So um, JCE um, did the actual um, um, rough drawing or sketch, and then um, Commercial Builders came back with a, a cost, a square foot cost, and I'll share that with you. Um, in, a, uh, in a few minutes, but um, um, as far as as far as the breakdown of the cost, um, the design piece of that is not that the bulk of it. So the design piece to do the the, the engineering, the structural, MEP, etc., um, is going to be ten thousand um, dollars. Now the actual cost of construction, including the ramps, the building. Um, is $118,420. So I don't want you to get sticker shot, but that's, that's the, the rough cost based on the square footage and, and, and a couple of the unknowns. Um, and I'll, I'll actually share that with you. I just got the cost estimate um, a little bit later on this afternoon. Um, one of the things that the, um, the, um, the architect um, engineer did not show is the covering. So there's not a cost for that. So um, I went back through my old cost estimates and I put in a $8,000 allowance for the covered walkway. Um, maybe cheaper, but at least I know that's a good number based on a covering that I've done in the past. So roughly, um, a design build contract including design is um, going to be about $136,420. Um, and then as far as the turnaround time, um, the, the estimated schedule is 12 weeks to complete after permits are received. So after this receive a building permit and all the budgetary funding is in place, you're looking at a 12 week turnaround time. So um, with that, I'll take any questions you may have. I mean, it's early on in the process. We just wanted to get an idea of what it would look like and what the rough cost would be, just to let you all know what that would look like as, um, as we go into the budgetary season. Questions from anyone for Mr. Morrison? Questions? No questions? Hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. that. Okay. Okay, this evening we have. Uh, several public hearings and what we did this evening to a little different than than normal is that we asked for a sign up for public hearings and the reason for doing this is that we had been um, made aware that the, potentially we could have a large number of people here so what we were trying to do was to make it so that we could be um, fair to everyone give everyone opportunity it, it appears that as far as the um, public hearings go in all cases um, we can go with a normal procedure of public hearing. Do you have any other than the one? Um, I will not put a time limit uh, on. We were going to if we had a large number, but for speaking for the first hearing, there's five. With I don't know how many public comments do you have, Miss Starling, that were sent in by email? Yeah, the one that was asked about first night, mm -hmm. she Okay, so everyone, I do, this does not have to be read if they, I mean, let the board read it. Okay, so if everyone will first draw attention to the one that is before you, and if you have not done so, uh, there is one that was sent to you, and this one was sent from uh, Lorianne Stanky, and uh, you got this by way of an email also today if you read your emails. Okay, at this time, we're going to, I need a motion to open the public hearing, and uh, I at this time, do we need um, 
Mr. McLaughlin, do you need to have anything as far as presentation to this or just open hearing? Motion to open the hearing. Have a motion to open the hearing. What Second. we'll be doing is this hearing will, uh, is there anyone here that would like to speak against this hearing? I'll read what it's for. The hearing is public hearing on the intention to close the Crampton Road right away from the Crenshaw <laughs> Drive intersection to the Par 4 Village property. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this uh, proposal to close this road? Seeing none, at this time, our first speaker is um, Maria. And if you will, introduce yourself and uh, give your address and come to the microphone at this time. Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the board and neighbors. If you will wait for just one moment, let me get oh. the mic. Okay. Now it's <laughs> good evening, everybody. <laughs> uh, we live in 5717 Crenshaw Drive, uh, a little bit over three years. We uh, purchased our home, um, moved from Florida. We chose the neighborhood because it was an established neighborhood, uh, peaceful and quiet. My husband came over. He went by during the day, during the night. It was fantastic. So. If they open Crampton, uh, everything is going to change. So if it, if it counts in any way, we would like to keep our peace and quiet. Yes. Thank you. That'll be it. All right. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Letga now. Take this off and I'll take my glasses with me. Madam Mayor, Commissioners, Ms. Adams, congratulations on your retirement and the staff. Um, I was going to get up here with a long speech and talk to you all about what we've talked about for the last year, but I think uh, we've said enough of it. There's, there's just one major concern that we've developed here over the weekend. Once we got the uh, agenda that was coming for the night, uh, there's one area on the uh, order that the ordinance uh, NS20 21-03 order closing Crampton Road and bullet number four. Uh, a lot of concern and talk about this. Uh, the no individual property owner in the vicinity of the street or in the subdivision in which it is located will be deprived of reasonable means of ingress and egress to his or her property. Uh, and I don't know if you can ask questions at a public hearing. If not, I'll make a statement. We The, the interest here... Mayor. I mean, okay. can he, can you enlighten us on that bullet point? Does, I mean, explain yeah. it to us what it means. You actually have to sign that as a, as a board. You have to determine that you're closing the road doesn't deprive property owners of ingress and ingress to their property in order to close the property, close the road. If you didn't make that finding, you wouldn't have that sort of ability to close the road. So I guess, I, and I wanted clarification on that. I was asked, earlier and um i didn't mean to interrupt you that's so fine. taking that's your time but um so so what so i guess his question to me earlier was does that mean it stays that people can still use it or it's closed it's closed right it's, it's closed it's permanently closed what all it means is that by closing that road you're not depriving someone of access to their property so even words, okay now landlocked because they have no even par four. Correct. As long as they have access from some other location, then that's that's the finding. Yeah. The finding is that closing this road will not deprive them of access to their property. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Ma yes, sir. Then, as we speak, then par four has another use that they could get into their property. Correct. Goff, Goffview driveway is their uh, choice, will be their driveway. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's all I have. Okay. I do want to thank the uh, Ms. Adams and their staff for all the assistance we've had in the last year. We've had a lot of crazy questions coming your way, and we appreciate your patience with us. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted a clarification. He asked me earlier, and I really didn't know what to tell okay. him. So thank you. And uh, Michael Gillis. <laughs> I got to take, golly, it takes a long time to get <laughs> undressed here. Uh, I really had a speech written, but I'm not going to use it, thankfully. Uh, I really want to thank you all uh, for your support that uh, we received finally a little bit over a month ago, uh, voting to start the process to close Crampton Road because it would have definitely had a negative impact on the neighborhood, and we all know that. And I want to thank you, Miss Adams, and staff. Uh, I hope Mills cooperating with us and helping us out, and y'all for your your cooperation as well too. And I still encourage you to vote five zero. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank sir. You. Julia Warfel. Okay, I just wanted to have one more clarification that the owner that has the property on par, par four land does have a way to get in and out of his property and not using Crampton Road. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, they currently have their their easement right on out to Goffview. But what they're they're working on is a common driveway to be shared by both developers and that's where right now they're in those negotiation stages okay. but it'll their driveway will be on Goffview okay and thank you thank you thank you ma'am Eddie Maynard thank you madam mayor member of council good to see you uh, I was going to make some comments, but uh, as the others have said, I don't see that that's necessary at this point. I just want to ensure you and thank you because I, I feel that the residents that live in our subdivision uh, it's not been any of our intentions to make your jobs any harder than what you already have or make things tough for you. But I did want to reemphasize the integrity of the neighborhood is very important it's an old established neighborhood as you all know we have a lot of uh, senior citizen residents a lot of children in that area and certainly uh, we know that growth and we know that development is coming but it's always that we need smart growth and smart development in Hope Mills and looking way down the road so with that to say uh, I'm very grateful uh, I served on the committee and I'm very grateful for the support that the residents my fellow neighbors have shown in the uh, this ongoing project but certainly I'm hoping tonight that we will see a unanimous vote and keeping that street closed permanently so uh, with that again I thank all of you for your time and thank you for your willingness to serve our community and with that thank you very much thank you sir and thank you for the service that you've given the town of Hope Mills um, is there anyone else would like to speak in favor of the closing of Crampton madam mayor I'll make a motion to close the public hearing I have a motion to close public hearing Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Madam Mayor, I also like to make a motion to approve ordinance NS 2021-03 order to permanently close the Crampton Road stub effective March 15th, 2021. Second. second. Have a motion and um, at this time, uh, if you will, uh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand seeing none opposed Crampton Road is officially closed on March 15 2021 and thank you very much and I appreciate the citizens I appreciate the large numbers I appreciate uh, the emails that sometimes we uh, felt like we 
uh, needed to answer, but in some cases we didn't answer because, again, we knew that we were working on the process and this is the, the process that's happened. So I want you to know that uh, you've done a great job. You've done an excellent job, and we hope that in future when we need, uh, you need, we need your support for whatever project is coming toward Hope Mills, that you'll help us and be an advocate for that too because sometimes we get so involved in not my neighborhood, we've got to remember that all of Hope Mills is, is ours, and so we want to protect the whole town. So you've done a great job, and I appreciate, appreciate everything that you've done, and I also appreciate the fact that um, um, former Commissioner uh, Mr. Maynard agreed to serve on the committee. The committee will continue to have a meeting because before the, the actual plan comes back to the board, the committee has to approve it. So whatever their development design is and whatever they plan on doing, it's still got to make one more step before it's final. So I just wanted you to know that also. Ma but again, may I, may yes, sir. I just a second, please? Yes, sir. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you who have come to this meeting and done things in an orderly manner and the way it should have been done. Mr. Maynard, I not only thank you for your past service, but your, for your service with this committee in leading them to uh, what they thought was the right thing. And I down deep in my heart believe it's the right thing. Because like I said before, I lived on a dead end street and they opened it up. I know what it's all about, trust me. <laughs> so congratulations guys. Uh, let's just do it the right way from here on out. Thank you. Next we have case P21-11, rezoning of 2.54 acres from CP Planned Commercial, MP Planned Industrial, and R10 Residential to C1P Planned Local Business or to a more restrictive zoning district located at the southeast quadrant of the intersection of Service Road 1132 Legion Road and North Carolina 162 Elk Road. Submitted by David Murray, Legion Road Investments, LLC, Queensway, LLC, CE Properties, LLC, C, and Dorothy M. and Edward R. Riddle owners and Peter Doster agent, Hope Mills. And I'll turn it over at this time to Mr. McLaughlin. Can we Mr. hold McLaughlin. up just a second, Madam Mayor? See, that was a quick second, wasn't it? <laughs> and this is behind uh, your uh, tab two. Hello, Madam Mr. Mayor, um, board, distinguished board. Um, as stated, this is case P. 2111 uh, it's a uh, consideration of request rezone 2.54 acres of land the subject tract is a collection of two properties and a small portion of another at the southeastern intersection of legion road and elk road totaling 2.54 acres 4173 legion road is zoned under the cp plan commercial district with 40 31 Elk Road regulated under the R75 residential district. The applicant is also proposing to include a portion of 4115 Legion Road, which is zoned and developed under the MP Plan Industrial District into the overall track as well. 4173 Legion Road is currently developed with a child care facility with a private residence constructed on 4031 Elk Road. This intersection is a well-established commercial node with a variety of uses with institutional and residential uses in the surrounding zone as well. In terms of the proposal, the applicant is proposing a 5,200 square foot Circle K convenience store with vehicular access off of Legion Road and Elk Road and cross lateral access to the adjacent industrial zone parcel. The proposed design contemplates 30 on-site parking spaces and will accommodate nine double-sided pumps. There are two proposed dumpster pads and the site will maintain 50-foot front yard setbacks off of both Legion and Elk Roads. There's also a deceleration lane um, proposed along Legion Road to comply with NCDOT standards. In terms of traffic, NCDOT has no obligations to this proposal. Um, the request is in compliance with the Southwest Common Land Use Plan uh, recommendation of heavy commercial and light industrial. And um, Cumberland County staff, as well as Hope Mill staff, is recommending approval of this case. It was approved unanimously at the Planning Board on February 16th. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. I do have okay. the site plan. Commissioner Marley has a question. Um, 
this this past week I was contacted by um, citizens that um, attend Southview Baptist Church, and um, they weren't in like opposition or anything. They just want to know if a uh, privacy fence or something separating the quick stop from the church property would 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 be put up. Um, I think they just had some concern. They wanted a little. You know, yeah. Well, yes, a fence or something separating it would be the um, and that's a good question too. On the site plan, it does show an eight foot as assumed buffer in terms of width, but this northern portion of the property does abut residential, so there is a privacy fence that would be required. Um, it's but the key is it's only. fence where it abuts residential um, but they do have um, they have it listed as an assumed buffer but I can talk to them because in, in my world they do have the ability to, to do a buffer in whatever ways they want most of the times when you have establishments like this they will choose um, a privacy fence as a buffer um, but I will confirm that is a requirement but I will work with them to, to no, make sure that it. comes up. Uh, like I said no, they, they, they weren't in opposition of it they just wanted a privacy fence for you know typically um the two circle k's that we have approved um one on cumberland and maine um had the same issue and they put their privacy fence up there as well but i told them i'd ask so. yeah thank you okay. do we have other questions i need to open here Okay. okay, at this time, is there anyone would like to speak against this proposal? Okay, we do have some that have signed up to speak in favor. And first is uh, Andy Pride. Okay, is that Peter Doster? Okay, if you'll come to the microphone. Hey, good evening. Good evening. My name is Peter Doster. Um, I'm with Bowman Consulting, representing Circle K as the civil engineering consultant. Um, I'm just here to uh, to answer any questions, but um, as Chancellor pointed out, we are looking to rezone to CP1, uh, the combination of three different lots, um, and we are going to be, you know, abutting uh, an, an uh, I'm sorry, a, a purchased property on the other side of the, cr the cross access road off of Elk, um, but that's not part of this rezoning just in, in reference to the space in between us and the, and the Baptist Church. Um, but uh, I don't, if anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer anything um, related to combination plots. Does anybody have questions? Questions? Anybody have questions? The only thing, the only one I have is that. And I've had uh, one question that was brought to my attention, and that is that you're in the midst of a high school, a middle school, elementary school, and of course a church that are all very active and very busy. Uh, they were concerned about um, not only traffic, but they were concerned about what kind of provisions there would be, and this would be something after the store opens, but they were just concerned that, um, just general concerns for high school age kids, and, and the fact that cut, getting across the street, and safety issues so i think that was their concern was they know it's going to be a place they go but they also don't want somebody to get hurt crossing um elk road or legion understood um we do have we have a proposed crosswalk uh connecting the roadway sidewalk to our building uh, for pedestrians um, it is going to be a um, you know well-lit site um, that's definitely a priority uh the candle foots uh, around the site are you know um uh, going to be, a, you know, a, a, of the uh, the regulation uh, for nighttime mm -hmm. and everything like that. So, from a standpoint of safety, when it comes to visual and you know uh, crossing and, and vehicles coming in and out of the of the site, um, I would say that it's going to be, you know, upholding standards that way. Okay. Um, 
But as far as crossing the roads, I mean, we have pedestrian crosswalks at the intersection. Um, and uh, I think that that and that would be again, it'd be on the school to make sure that they use crosswalks and don't you can see where where you are at the back uh, of the building next to the church. That's right in front of um, the entrance to Southview Middle School. And then right up from there is the entrance to Southview High School. And that's where you're going to have the kids after school or before school um, cutting across. And I think that was the concern was the fact that um, just making sure that it's safe because it, it would be it would open up uh, a lot of activity, which there's already that has happened with the shopping center across the street. So mm -hmm. I, I understood their concerns and, and the church, too, was concerned because of um, the what he had mentioned but also the, the tr increase in traffic but mm -hmm. we understand yeah i mean for for all for all the, the two cross access roads um and, and you can call them you know kind of intersite roads um you know we'll have proper signage um stop bars striping um things like of that nature for for the cars and and so uh you know as far as crossing um i don't see a, a huge concern with any pedestrians um, accessing the site with uh, with the traffic around, um, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Anyone have anything? Okay, motion to close public. Motion hearing. to close public hearing. Okay, have a motion to close public hearing. Now, is there any action? Madam Mayor, I make a motion in the case P twenty one eleven, the Town of Hope Mills Board of Commissioners vote to approve the rezoning from C P Plan Commercial R ten Residential and EP and MP Plan Industrial to C P Plan local business and find this request consistent with the southwest cumberland land use plan 2013 designation of heavy commercial and light industrial the heavy commercial designation is designed to provide for shopping needs of the immediate neighborhood and traveling public is usually located near major intersections approval of the request is reasonable and of public interest as the district has requested is in the harmony with surrounding existing land uses zoning and the site is located at a heavily trafficked intersection have second. a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Mr. McLaughlin, just for a point of reference, that area is in the town of Hope Mills. Yes, because yes. Because I know there was also a question, had it been annexed in, because that was a no man's land for a while. The zoning map even looks really confusing, um, but it is in the town, um, especially when they carved off that um, industrial piece uh -huh. um, but it, this is completely in town limits. okay thank yeah. you all right next we have case p21-14 rezoning of one plus or minus acres from r10 residential to cp plan commercial or to a more restrictive zoning district located at the southwest corner of the intersection of service road 1246 <laughs> elwood drive and north carolina 59 hope mills road submitted by joseph and trina riddle and paul joseph and mary hazel Dietzen. And I'll turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin for uh, this is case behind tab three. Um, as stated by Madam Mayor, uh, this is case P2114, a rezone, uh, request to rezone one acre of land um, from R10 to CP. Um, the subject property uh, is one acre in size and is, is, in it, is an assemblage of two parcels located at the southwestern intersection of Elwood Drive and Hope Mills Road. <laughs> Both parcels have residential structures with one addressed as 5621 Elwood Drive and the other addressed as 5615 Elwood Drive. As it relates to the surrounding zoning, the areas to the immediate south and east are well-established commercial corridors with the area to the immediate west developed with residential uses. The area to the immediate and far north is also established an established corridor as well um, under the commercial zoning district. The applicant is proposing to combine these two parcels into the Mill Village project that was recently approved. And I had the site plan up in a few. Um, that was recently approved by the Bo Hope Mills Board of Commissioners. The area to the immediate south was approved for a large commercial development with the two subject properties needed for vehicular access, providing a secondary entrance to the overall development. As these parcels are residency zoned, they have to be rezoned in order to be added to the previously approved commercial development. Um, DOT has no objections to this site and it is in compliance with the Southwest Cumberland Land Use Plan designation of heavy commercial. 
You'll see uh, the subject property hashed um, at the intersection of Elmwood and Hope Mills Road. This is a um, makeup of the land uses. What you see is your commercial land uses in red and your single family land uses in yellow. So you'll see to the far west is your established residence, but along Hope Mills Road, um, that is a pretty well established commercial corridor. Um, this is just another uh, outlook of the um, surrounding zoning. These are your uh, hydric and hydric inclusion soils. Um, this is the compliance with the Southwest plan. And these are your site photographs. This is a view of the subject property. This is another view directly at the subject property. This is the west view along Elwood Drive. Subject property is on the left side of the screen. This is a north view of the subject property. Well, basically standing at the subject property looking across. This is the east view along Elmwood. Subject property is to the right. And this is the previously approved Elmwood. Um, this is the site beside Sonic um, for reference. The reason why I put this up is you guys all have already approved the Millville's development, but the area outlined in red is the subject property's connection to that. So as you can see, when you initially approved it, this part, these two parcels were left off because they needed to go through a, re a rezoning. The original uh, Mill Village was already zoned commercial, so it just came through as a site plan approval. But they wanted to actually bring these other two pieces in so that they can get a secondary entrance to the site off of Elmwood. That would create a little um, better flow of traffic. But I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. Anyone have questions? Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Chancellor, I'm glad you put this up because I wanted to ensure that my memory was correct, and I, I think it is that there's a <coughs> roadway between the subject property and the residential R10 property that's behind the subject property. Am I, I think I'm correct. You talking about? That roadway right there in the back. Right here? Uh, I can't see where you're pointing. Like yeah, right there. That's proposed. Yeah, that's a proposed roadway. I, th I thought that's how the site plan was laid out because that would have answered the other question I had about a privacy fence barrier if that roadway wasn't there. Because across from that is the R10 residential piece. Yes. So if this was just um, parcel, abutting parcel, right. and it was commercial, residential, then that would apply. Okay. Um, but the roadway going through that kind of negates. Yeah. That, so, so thank you for putting that up. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? motion to open the public hearing okay at this time we'll open our public hearing and i don't i know that we have uh, mr riddle here to speak in favor of this so i'll turn it over to mr riddle at this time thank you ms mayor and members of the town board appreciate you your work and uh your time you spend doing what you do um i'm really just here for questions if there are any um Part of this this plan it has been devised because DOT is planning on putting an island in this section of Hope Mills Road. Um, you know, they've done, I guess, what, Rockfish Road to Camden Road, and then the next phase, I guess, is Camden to the Hope Mills Bypass. Um, it's on the plan. I'm trying to think if it's been funded. You know, DOT kind of got, with everybody being in lockdown and not using much gas for a year, they kind of ran out of money, I think. So some of their stuff's been put off. I'm not real sure about their time, and it's, it's put off some. But uh, I had gotten a leftover approved at the main entrance to this development, and they're also going to put one at Elwood. So if you were leaving Hope Mills and you were heading back towards Fayetteville, you'll be able to make lefts into this track at two points, at, at the main entrance and then at Elwood. So that was the reason behind the connection. Also, I own a lot uh, behind that brown area that would be kind of a buffer between me and the, there, there's, I have a lot here. Then there's another empty lot and then there's a house. So it is buffered some from, from the houses. Um, and uh, 
it's not a real large development. I mean, there's, there's, there's some bad land there. I mean, I, you know, this, I understand this was a lake bed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that have been in Hope Mills a long time maybe remember that. Um, but uh, years ago, we built that advanced auto, and uh, it, 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 I tell you, Hope Mills is a good, a good business town. That, that advanced auto was out back then in the middle of nowhere, and I was amazed at how well they did there. So the idea, too, I was going to try to connect – that back driveway to them because they wouldn't have access to those lefts if I didn't do that. So it was a tricky site. There's been a lot of work trying to get, you know, wetlands determinated and we're going to have to put a big uh, retention pond you can see back in the back left corner. But um, I've got some good things in store working on a couple of things at Hope Mills right now. I've got another uh, parcel that's going to come to y'all that's going to the planning board tomorrow night. So uh, I'm going to bring some good stuff to Hope Mills. And I appreciate working with y'all. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Joe. Yes, sir. Nice work. Thank you. Really, really is nice work. Thank you. I mean, you. you put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this site plan. Uh, to, and to make it work for just about everybody that's going to travel up Oak Mills Road because of those islands. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to thank you for that. Yes, sir. Thank you. At this time, is there anyone else would like to speak in favor of or against this development? If motion not, any questions? Motion to close public hearing. At this time, is there any other questions <clears throat> that you would have? If not, do we have action? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion in case P21-14, the Town of Hope Mills Board of Commissioners vote to approve the rezoning request from R10 residential to CP plan commercial and finds the request consistent with the Southwest Cumberland Land Use Plan 2013 designation of heavy commercial and low, low density residential. The heavy commercial designation provides for the shopping needs of the immediate neighborhood and the traveling public. Both designations desire public water and sewer approval of the request is reasonable and in the public interest as the district requested is in harmony with surrounding existing land uses and zoning. I have, think it. have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. May I only have one question for yeah. Mr. Riddle? Are you guys playing ball? Talk to Marco back there. <laughs> Play the ball, he said? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, mine are all grown up now. Uh -huh. Man, I, I'm missing out. When's, <laughs> when's the season starting soon? Talk to him, little Marco Morrison back there. He can hook you up. <laughs> he late. He late. <laughs> Next, we have case P21-15, rezoning of Point 0.18 plus or minus acres, point eight, tenths, <laughs> plus or minus acres from R6 residential to R15 residential CZ conditional zoning for recreation amusement, public, private, not operate as a business for profit or to a more restrictive zoning district located at 5439 Fountain Lane, submitted by Chancellor McLaughlin on town of, town of Hope Mills. I turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin. Okay. Um, as stated, this is a 0 0.1 acre parcel um, addressed as 5439 Fountain Lane. It's recently purchased by the town of Hope Mills. The site is currently vacant and fronts approximately 84 feet along Fountain Lane with the Hope Mills Lake property located along the red property line. As it relates to the surrounding zone and the area immediate to, immediately adjacent to the east and west of the property regulated, is regulated under the residential zoning um, district and developed as such. Although there is residential zoning to the rear on the property, it, that property exists as Hope Mills Lake zoned under the R15 residential district. In terms of the proposal, Hope Mills is looking to consolidate this prop, this parcel with the Hope Mills Lake property to utilize this parking and also as a secondary access point to uh, our lake for vehicular traffic. The use of the lot is also associated with the current improvements to the existing Big T's establishment with approximately 10 parking spaces anticipated on this parcel. 
Six foot privacy fences are also proposed along both side property lines to comply from bu with buffering requirements. And from a zoning perspective, this request also brings consistency to the lake part with uniform zoning for both parcels. Um, in terms of DLT and, uh, coordination, um, they have indicated that they would recommend that this connection in terms of the driveway be spaced as far away from NC-59 to maximize any vehicular storage uh, necessary. Cumberland County staff recommendation is for approval. And let me get into some of the zoning. Um, as stated, you can see the makeup of the surrounding zoning area. Although the area to the southeast is the R15, that is the lake property. So it's not like that's an established neighborhood, but there is an established neighborhood across the street from the lake to the north and to the, uh, what I would call northwest. Um, this is um, another breakdown of the land use as you can see to the north and northwest you have the established single family in yellow um, at the intersection of um, Johnson and Maine and across the street um, you do have the established uh, commercial corridor along Main Street. Um, this is some area photographs that give you another kind of outlook on the zoning this is your uh, water and sewer hydric and, and hydric inclusion soils. The plan is not compliant with the um, Southwest land use, um, land use plan that calls for medium density residential. And this is the layout of that proposed parking. So what you see is um, to the left side of the screen, that's the entrance off of Found Lane. And to the right side, that's basically the consolidated entrance now into the Big T's parking lot. So at the end of the day, this development will achieve the existing parking off of the main street to the lake. And now you have a secondary entrance off of um, Fountain Lane to our lake property. From my understanding from Public Works, I think this is the entrance where a lot of boats will be using um, for the rope ramps and things of that nature. But I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. Does anyone have questions <coughs> for Mr. McLaughlin? No questions? This time, Motion. open public hearing. At this time, I'd like to recognize Mr. Rod McLean to speak uh, against this proposal. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, Town Staff. I'd like to ask you a question right off the get-go. Do any of you know how wide Fountain Lane is? <clears throat> and I take it by the deer in the headlights looks. You don't. Fountain Lane is 20 feet wide. It is not a thoroughfare. This will make it into a thoroughfare at least until the Sleepy property, uh, 54, 439, I think it is, Fountain Lane, the empty lot. <clears throat> it's going to make life difficult for the property owners getting in and out, especially if you've got somebody trying to get in there with a boat. I don't know if any of you have tried to turn into Fountain Lane. If you're coming up from the bottom of the lake, that's a real tight turn. If you're coming from the north, it is also difficult to try to find a gap in the traffic to get over. And just from personal experience, I will tell you that if you get into the turn lane, you are quite likely to come across somebody herring down the road doing at least 35 to 40 miles an hour in the turn lane to go to Rockfish Road. So it's going to make life a little bit awkward. I hope to God that you do not make Fountain Lane the exit. There is a telephone pole or telegraph pole on the corner. It was recently hit and broken and they had to come out and repair it. That is right on the edge of Main Street and Fountain Lane. I come yay close to it every time I come out of the road. Not because I'm trying to, but it's just there. It's something you have to put up with. I will guarantee to you some numbnut pulling a trailer will take that pole out again. Uh, correction. They won't take the pole out. The pole will take their vehicle out. 
I did attend the Cumberland County hearing on this, and I asked for lighting to be put here. I definitely need a six-foot fence between my, our property and this parking lot. And because of your requirements, I understand you've got to put the fence up on the other side, on the empty gardener lot. I have already put up with the green monster at the playground that was put there. It was, for quite a period of time, a hangout for people experimenting in what fornication is and people doing drugs. Because we complained enough and the public took some more notice and the police took notice, that has gone away. But two fences in a parking lot, <clears throat> it's not going to take them more than two minutes to figure out that this is going to be another lover's lane. So I asked for the lights. But what I'm also going to ask for, if you put gates up on the Lake Park right now, you better put a gate up on this parking lot. And we need more police drive throughs to ensure that people aren't up to nefarious acts in that parking lot, hidden between two six-foot fences. I hope I don't come across it. But it's up to you folks to make sure that I don't. And I'm basically, I'm against it. I realize that's a losing battle, because you've already made your minds up. But give me a gate, give me some police protection, and give me the lights going down onto the property. Not over onto my side, but down into the property. Thank you kindly. And uh, just to, to speak to one thing that I know that's in the future is I know that we have plans for a pedestrian crosswalk there at Fountain Johnson in Maine. That's um, correct. That's in the works um, also to improve the sidewalks there. That's the other correct. thing is my understanding is to facilitate unloading boats, the entrance will be on the current entrance so they can go straight to the boat ramp. The parking would be then for the boat to be up on the fountain lane, the new part, the sleepy lot. So the actual uh, pulling in of boats and trailers onto oh, that Street. probably won't be happening because they want to take their boat directly to the um, to Main Street. But that's the only comments I have as far as knowing that there are plans for a pedestrian crosswalk. If I can make a note, man, if you look at the uh, plans, the plan is for the traffic to come in on Patton Lane. That's the way that the lots are set up. I think well, what Mayor is talking about is those um, entrances don't appear to be entrances for trucks. It looks right. like you're saying the truck entrance for boats will be basically the main entrance off of Main Street. Yeah. Madam yeah. Mayor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Chancellor, can you walk me through exactly what a person in a truck and a trailer with a boat, they're going to go to the dock, right? They're going to unload their boat, um, and then how are they going? How are they going to navigate to get to? Be this honest with you, on? I more than likely would defer that to Public Works, who is okay. the project manager of this. But I will tell you, um, from a uh, DOT standpoint, um, you know we speak about zoning, mm -hmm. um, but when we're talking about traffic concerns, we lean on the experts. Um, DOT has not expressed any. Um, issues with this proposal again mm -hmm. they indicated that they would like for the entrance to be as furthest away from Main Street to allow for vehicles to stack which is what you have here right. um, I will also say with the um, request for lighting um, that would be up to the board I would just uh, defer you to the other parks that we have in terms of any type of lighting that we have after hours I'm not sure if we do um, but in instances where there are um, is a need for lighting. We I've seen down lighting specified. Um, this is what we did at Walmart. I'm not sure if that's conducive to a park, but that is your um, your your call. Um, the buffering, as stated, would be required. But in terms of the operation of the boats and access, I probably would defer that to um, Public Works, mm -hmm. um, as they are the project manager of this project. I'm simply just facilitating the zoning. 
if I'm not mistaken, in phase two of our Lake Park plan, mm -hmm. that phase two did have the parking lot design and that parking lot was taken into consideration of the Salibi property. Of course, the phase two plan was not carried through. So, but I don't, I believe we can go back and look in that because it did design um, parking, if I'm not mistaken. I remember we, that was one of the focuses. Um, and, I, and I will say that um, to the, the point about the, um, the grant we got for the sidewalks, there's a lot going on in this area. So um, from a pedestrian standpoint, this is going to have a major um, um, enhancement at this intersection. Right now you don't have any crosswalks and you don't have any sidewalks on um, across the street from the lake. So that actual grant puts four crosswalks at Johnson, Fountain Lane, and Main. Um, a sidewalk from Johnson to Maine all the way down to Trade Street across the street and a mid-block pedestrian crossing as well. So I think what um, appears the town is trying to do is centralize or at least provide a better flow of vehicular traffic to the site while we're at the same time trying to balance the, uh, the ability of having a harmonious balance between pedestrian and vehicular traffic at the same time. Um, but I would like to point out this is a park. Um, a park is meant for public use. Um, we're actually in the process of trying to see if we can provide more parking um, as we have we do have severe parking issues all throughout this entire area. Um, if you're talking about the golf course here, Trey Street and the lake, we're trying to find as many more uh, many parking um, spaces as we can while creating a direct pedestrian connection between all these facilities. Um, but I just wanted to make sure everyone uh, is aware that this is not a commercial development. This is a park that's meant for public use. Madam Mayor, may yes. Don Cisco answer my question? What? What do Mr. McLaughlin would be have to answer your question? I think he was asking about the boats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you, I mean, I don't think you finished asking it, but what were you saying? Uh, okay. Walk me through the diagram that's on, on the screen. When someone comes up to the lake with a boat and a trailer, they go down to the dock, they unload the boat. So now how, what are they going to do from there to get to this lot? Are they going to drive out of? of Hope Mills uh, Lake and then go on Main Street and then go up Fountain Lane and come in? How are no. they going to access this? Well, from my understanding, if they're coming in this way, they're coming right into the lake. Mm -hmm. So they can pretty much park here. I'm not really Nope. Ah. It's going to take you, Don, to do it. You'll, you'll see where I'm going once once he does once he does this. No, I've not seen that drawing. I got to say, I've not seen that drawing, so um, not sure that's where. That's what Dale put together. Dale did. Okay, we're meeting with Dale Crawford tomorrow, so we can do some tweaking on that. To answer your question, mm -hmm. traffic will go in the normal entrance to the lake right now right with their boats right. they will unload their boats mm -hmm. and the intent then is for them to come back out on the main right. street take a right make a right on to fountain lane mm -hmm. and this will be one-way traffic from fountain lane back down into the park so that way when anybody leaves they will leave the parking lot into the the existing parking area and the boat ramp area reload and then exit out the, the exit the existing exit so we're going to have two openings to this parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so you're going to have one on because Fountain Lane and one going down next to Big T's. If you look on the back of that drawing, that line is straight. That's the reason it's, it's kind of confusing to me. It, this looks like there's, there's not an entrance out of the back. But it's but it's actually a drive through off of it's Fountain a, Lane. It's a drive through off of Fountain Lane. It's through. a one way yes, drive through. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is in accordance with the request for the lighting, I do agree that we need to have a gate there on Fountain Lane too to close that off like we do the main park. I do agree that, and that's for and that's for safety purposes to close that gate. When the park closes, that gate closes too. Sure. The same thing that we do down at um, Golf View Greenway, 
We got an excellent gate down there that closes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, that's where I'm going, Mayor, and that's why okay. why I wanted to make sure we were good on the flow. I mean, I hadn't seen this drawn either, Don, until I saw it okay. in this packet. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at this drawing, this is a site plan only. This is not the for construction drawing for this. Yeah. Can we do it? Can we put so a gate there? Well, we can't. Yes, sir. We'll put a gate there. We can put lighting in, you know, okay. all the things that we need to. Right now, what is being proposed to the board is the location, essentially. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, Don. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Cisco. All right, this time we didn't close public hearing. Motion no. to close the public hearing. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, is any other comments or, or a actions from the board? Madam Mayor, I can make a motion. Okay. In case uh, P21-15, the Town of Hope Mills Board of Commissioners vote to approve the rezoning request from R6 residential to R15 residential CZ conditional zoning for recreation, amusement, public, private, not operated as a business for profit to include the conditional zoning conditions in the site plan and include the condition to add lighting. I'm going to add a gate here. The board finds the additional parking is needed and the subject pro property is vacant and available for public use. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. And one, just one for, uh, for clarification. I know that in, in most cases we have to have an eight foot buffer fence. Is that true in this case also? Six. It's you six can have up to seven, but it's typically six. six feet they put up. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing no, Commissioner Leg, you in favor? Yes, I'm okay, all in favor. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Seeing, seeing, seeing none. <laughs> seeing none opposed. Thank you. All right. Next, we have on our agenda is public comments, and again, uh, we'll invite them to the microphone. The first would be Grilly Mitchell. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, Tom staff. Melissa, I want to thank you so very much for the contribution that you made to this town, and I thank you so very much for your support. The things that uh, we did together to get the park out there fixed and improved, you was a tremendous effort in that area. Thank you so very much, and the veterans thank you as well. And I want to thank Don Sisko and his team, his staff. Thank you very much. Uh, I drove by this evening and I noticed that we now have sidewalk going up to the monument and that has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is an amazing improvement. Now I can take a guy, uh, veteran disabled out of their car, don't have to worry about bogging down in the sand. And that is a major <laughs> improvement. Thank you so very much. I was going to talk about a couple other things tonight, but I thought about, you know what, we're going to finish this on a positive note because with the improvements that we're making, the good things that's going on in this town, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you all so very much and keep doing the good work that you're doing. And for keep working this way, Hope Mills is going places. And I wanna be on that ride to ride with them to the place of positiveness. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next we have uh, Dale Ivey. And I believe that he actually was had signed up because of Crampton. Okay, and then um, Rod, Rod McLean. I see I'm starting at a debit. If you, uh, Ms. Madam Mayor, Ms. Commissioners. Wait a second, let's get Miss Starling to start it. She didn't pay. She... There you go. I pay my taxes for three minutes. I want my three minutes. <laughs> uh, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, town staff, thank you very much indeed. I have not heard any comments from the town of Hope Mills in reference to the upcoming elections. I understand that there are some towns that where the election basis, they need the results from the censor. Hope Mills does not require 
results from a sensor in order to conduct an election. I would like to hear the commissioners, the mayor, and the town staff come up and issue some sort of statement or some sort of where we stand for the election of Hope Mills. As I said, we do not need a census in order to conduct a, a, an election in Hope Mills. Mr. McLean, I can answer that for you because I was in a conference this past week. Those, those areas that have districts, which would be like federal, runs on districts, those are the areas that would have to wait for numbers and counts to have those districts, if necessary, redrawn. Hope Mills is a municipality that runs uh, citywide, so mm -hmm. it does not. The census does not affect us. So our election would be, uh, unless for some reason the whole election was delayed, our election would be on time because of not needing to have a census to determine it. Madam Mayor, that is the best news I have probably heard since the start of the pandemic. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All righty then. That concludes public comment. <clears throat> From our consent agenda, is there anything that you would like moved to our um, new business? Or would you I get a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is before you? Motion to approve as is. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. All right. I, I, put my hand up this time. I saw that one this time. <laughs> All right, this time we have new business. And the first item on the new business consideration of accepting the bid proposal in the amount of $19,740 from Cardinal Landscaping in the installation of a rain garden at Town Lake. And who gets this? LaMarco? Okay. And this will be baton tab eight. Madam Mayor and Board of Commissioners, um, this project is consistent with the, um, the request to beautify the lake property. Um, approximately 10 years ago, First Citizen donated $20,000 towards the beautification of the lake property. Um, this right here fulfills that um, one, but then also it addresses a drainage issue where there's an underground spring. So it addresses that, that runoff and um, that flooding, but it also beautifies the area with flood tolerant uh, trees, shrubs, um, ground cover, and perennials. Um, um, one other thing I'd like to mention, there are approximately four trees along the um, between the side the um, the existing um, um, bikeway and the road that um, that will more than likely have to come out because one they are in bad shape but two um, um, they are um, somewhat diseased according to the um, one of the contractors so just want to make everybody aware that um, we there will be about three possibly four trees that will come down, but knowing that we will replace them with the um, four large trees that are shown on the, um, on, on the plan there. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Yes, sir. Mark, are those trees undermining the sidewalk with roots as well? The existing trees? Yes, sir. They are, they are. And, and, and probably when, when um, public works come in with the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you know, when they come back in to, to do their forms and everything, they're probably going to have to dig down to the point where, you know, the, whatever damage hasn't been done to those um, those struggling trees now, they're probably going to die anyway because of, you know, the intrusiveness of the, the sidewalk. So, mm -hmm. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Lamarco, which one of the two projects is going to start first? And and, and I think I'm I'm kind of piggybacking off Commissioner Leg with those trees, because I understand Audrey's going to do the sidewalk. Is that correct? And that would be a public works commission um, question. Ah, maybe. <laughs> um, based on scheduling, I do know that it won't be till mid to late April before we can begin the rain garden project, just based on everybody's workload and what, what landscaping contractors are up against now. So the trees and the tree roots are... I didn't want them to impact the, the sidewalk replacement I guess right well and, and what, so I, what that's I reason I'm asking which well what I plan on doing before they begin the landscaping I plan on taking having those 
trees right. taken out anyway. So mm -hmm. th th at any rate, they're, they're probably going to be gone before we do the rain garden anyway. So if, if, if our guys are going to start in mid-April, um, we are going to contract with um, you know, one of our tree removal people to go ahead and take those trees out in preparation for the rain garden installation. The, the multi-use path, which is what we're calling it, the multi-use um, walking path, um, it's my understanding, and, and Don can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that Autry is in the process okay. of um, their, their, their done site visit. I think it's in my manager's yeah, it is. Um, they've done they've done the site visit. Um, they are preparing um, to give us a to give us a bid. Well, not a bid, but they're they're going to give us an estimate. Okay. Um, there are a lot of things, a number of things that we have to take into consideration, and that they have to take into consideration. One of those is there's going to be a considerable amount um, of grading work that's going to have to mm -hmm. be done because of the slope yeah. mm -hmm. and also the length of the path and then also having to deal with um, DOT and possible lane closure. Okay. So there may have to be some nighttime work because okay. we don't want concrete trucks on our grass and ruining our um, sprinklers, our mm -hmm. sprinkler systems. Mm -hmm. and so there's there's all of those things that they've got to factor in um, so I'm not sure they didn't give any indication when they would be giving that estimate to Don but they are in process of looking at that so is it fair to say when I look at this this project what I what I what, what I wouldn't like to see is we have this project finished and then the replacement of the multi-purpose track come in and tear up some of the work that's already been done by Cardinal Landscape. Right. That's kind of where I'm going, Marco. Okay, so you, you, I'm because I don't. I, this, they do beautiful work, and this right. is a beautiful project. But I will I say we're to see it lost. Right, some well, of it lost. Well, we'll coordinate it. Um, I think I think the pressure was more or less coming from me wanting them to get started. Because what I don't want to happen is um, we'd like to go ahead and catch it at, you know, late winter, early spring. Mm -hmm. What I don't want them to do is be planting plant materials in the summer where it's hard to establish and keep them watered. So that, that's just been my window. You know, as long as we're not in the middle of summer installing plant materials, because it wouldn't be fair to them to have to try to keep those plant materials living, because that is going to be a requirement before we agree to take over, you know, the maintenance of them. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the, the edge of the bed, we are a good five feet away from where the proposed um, multi-purpose path is going to be. So there is a little bit of a buffer. We're not right adjacent or abutting the, um, the multi-purpose path, so there will be a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but at any rate, we'll, we'll coordinate that with Public Works. With, uh, yeah, with Don yeah. Public I, I, just, I, I just want to caution that. Okay. You know, because I'd hate to, to see one Absolutely. project take out the good work of another and then we have to go in and put more money into a project that in the planning process we could have decided which one comes first i mean the tree's going to come out regardless right and then i then i think there's a lot of sloping that's got to be done too so uh, i leave that to the experts and that's you and don cisco but uh, that was just my concerns and thank you mayor mm -hmm. and i just want you to know that this is a project that has been out there for so long <laughs> That this just makes me my heart happy because we've <laughs> looked at this since uh, 2010. So for this to be done and then the mar the marquee to be complete, so hopefully it's all going to culminate about the same time. And I think that's wonderful because these these are things that have been in the works for such a long time. So I appreciate this and I I like the design and I, I like the fact that it's going to eliminate some of the flooding that we have too. And I think. That's wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor Warner. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Mr. Commissioner Edwards. Let's go make a motion. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept the bid proposed proposal and um, authorize town manager to execute uh, the agreement with Cardinal Landscaping and install a drain garden at Town Hall. Yeah, town Lake. You got it. Oh, come back, Tim. <laughs> I didn't get a gender in the so I don't know what's going on. 
the amount. Okay, for ni 19740 Okay, and then I think mm -hmm. the, the piece of that is that was the money that was supplied by First Citizens yeah. Bank for this corner. I second the motion. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you, sir. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, I know it's a lot. When you make the motion, like I know you um, didn't know the amount. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have discussion consideration of regarding the renaming of the Town of Hope Mills Veterans Memorial Park, and this was requested by Commissioner Bell Flowers. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a discussion about about an action that the board that, that we took as a board in our last meeting, and it's out of respect to Jim and Jean Clark, and it's totally out of respect to uh, the Veterans Affairs uh, Commission Chairman Greeley Mitchell and and his committee. And out of the our, out and respect out of our local veterans of foreign wars VFW post 10630. I think maybe we were a little premature when we were talking about honoring Jim and Jean Clark about renaming the park, which is Veterans Memorial Park after them. Some years ago, after Jim passed, we had a discussion about how to honor him and his service to the Hope Mills community and especially with the Memorial Park that was established in 92-93. And at that point, the VFW had decided that we would honor them in a, in a memorial monument. Uh, and Jean was, and knew that and we were just gonna wait until she passed as well and then memorialize and honor them in a monument like we do just about every, every other veteran that we've had pass in that park. We've got a number of monuments that are in that park with, all, with, with veterans' names that have passed over the years that have contributed greatly to Hope Mills community. And the reason I say this mainly is because, because when you look at other veterans' memorial parks, they don't, they're not designated by any one veteran name. They are designated like downtown as Freedom Memorial Park. And we all know that Don Talbert was very instrumental behind that park and still is today. Um, in Raleigh, we have North Carolina Veterans Park. In Cary, we have Veterans Memorial Park. Just about every municipality in town has their, their parks and they name them all Veterans Memorial Park and not after one individual to even include Arlington National Cemetery. So I bring this up because I, I think maybe we were premature at taking that action and sometimes we can get caught in that motion. I know I do because of, of the service and the time that I had spent with Jim and Jean Clark. So I would like the board to, to consider rescinding that vote and leaving it the name of Veterans Memorial Park, Hope Mills Veterans Memorial Park out of respect and honor to all of our veterans that are past, current, and future. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate Ms. Bellfire's uh, comments. Um, I brought this to the board. Uh, I'm, on the, I'm the liaison with the Veteran Affairs Committee, and they've talked about it for some time, like I said at the last meeting. And um, I was asked to bring it to the board, and uh, that's what I've done. Um, no ill intention on any of the veterans. Um, I'm not a veteran myself, but I respect each and every one of them. And I think that what should happen since we got a veteran affairs committee is since we've already took action and voted on it, send it back to the at this point, just send it back to the Veteran Affairs Committee for their recommendation and let the Veteran Affairs Committee work through this and come back to the board with what they want, with what the Veteran Affairs Committee wants. Um, so that would be that would be my recommendation is not, not change our vote right now, but send it back to the um, Veteran Affairs Committee for recommendation and let them work through it as a committee. 
Has, will that be all right with you, Commissioner Bellflower? That'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at this point, we're not changing anything. We're going to refer it to the Veterans Affairs Commission, and then y'all uh, can, when you meet, bring it back to the board. The okay. chairman, the, the chairman of that committee is here tonight. So yeah, okay. do we need a second on that, or is that just a consensus? There's just consensus. Cons I consensus. Okay. Because I didn't make a motion. And I, and I want to go on record too. I, I'd like to go on record too as saying, like I said before, no ill will toward yeah. any of the veterans. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I'm sure all of us, as well as me, we respect everything they do and everything that they've done for the community and. They keep us free and allow us to sit here tonight and, and, and talk about this. So um, I just, I'm, I'm the liaison of that committee and, and I feel like we should send it back to them because they're the one that asked for it first. So that's why I want to send it back to them. Okay. Commissioner Marley, I thank you for your words and I thank you for your kind words toward our veterans. And just know that as we sit here tonight, my granddaughter is at Fort Jackson as a member of the United States Army, and she is two weeks away from graduating basic training. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, at, at this time we have, um, we had the good fortune to be in conferences last week, most, the, most all the week, um, and Mr. McLaughlin and myself both attended the uh, Main Street Conference, but I asked if he would give an update on that conference and then I'll give you an update on the other conference. So I turn over to Mr. McLaughlin for an update on the Main Street Conference. Um, and one thing I'd like to just point out, um, this is my third, I think. Um, it's, this is, it's actually known as the largest um, conference of this type in the nation. Um, it's really, really cool. And I guess everybody was kind of concerned about how they were going to do it virtually. Um, but um, it was themed Pivoting for Prosperity. So the 2021 Main Street Conference was held virtually from March 9th to the 11th. Um, in general, the main focus of the Main Street program is to help build more resilient towns, downtowns that are better equipped to face the next challenges of a growing and diverse economy. Um, with the four-point approach to downtown revitalization, the program was developed to combat the negative impacts of development of malls and strip centers that attracted anchor businesses and relocated them from downtown areas. With that end, the 2021 Main Street Conference explored a commitment to local um, as one of the keys to economic development in small cities and is not only locally owned businesses, um, but locally, it's tied to locally locally invested investments in general. Um, as the largest statewide downtown revitalization conference in the country this year, the Main Street program celebrated its 20-year anniversary. Some of the keynote speakers um, that were there were from the Johnson County Visitors Bureau, the town of Chapel Hill, Belmont, Main Street downtown directors, uh, the North Carolina League of Municipality was was there, um, Blowing Rock Chamber of Commerce. Now, all of these were keynote speakers who actually had uh, individual presentations. Um, City of Morganton, North Carolina Department of Public Health, and Alexander County Economic Development Corporation, to name a few. Um, now, in terms of the sessions I attended, um, I was super nerd. I look at all of it. Um, but I attended about... I was popping in and out of multiples at one time, so they had it set up where you can just, and it's still up. I'm not too sure if you know that, Mayor. Um, the website is still up, so I was looking at um, some of the videos um, earlier today, even though the conference is over. But some of the uh, sessions I attended or participated in, um, tips to simplifying um, marketing for you and your merchants. It's a, a session that included marketing strategies focusing on increasing the impact of downtown merchants marketing efforts. Uh, Making Main Street uh, Main Street a destination was another session. This is a webinar um, from the NC Main Street and Rural Planning Center who is also doing our gateway study. Um, their program um, is titled um, NC Main to Main Trail which is a virtual trail highlighting designated Main Street communities. Um, it's another session, Great Trails uh, Plan and Downtown. This is a session by NC Department of Transportation's Integrated Mobility Division focused on a statewide trail network with goals of connecting state park cities and downtowns. 
um, there was a, another keynote um, address that I was really interested in, um, resiliency for locally owned businesses. This was a session that centered around the kinds of economic stimuli that cost little to nothing and opportunities to do more with less. Um, five more where all trails lead to downtown, diversity and inclusion, uh, nuts and bolts of public finances. Um, is downtown development ready and pivoting um, to virtual events? The reason why this is so important is because my goal is to have Trey Street officially um, instituted into the Main Street program. Um, we've been talking to NC Commerce about this for a number of years. It's about a three-year commitment. Um, they're probably watching this, but um, their, uh, us partnering them with a gateway study is basically a, a, a doorway in to partner with them with this Main Street program. So we have a few things going on, but these programs um, really, really provide a, a wealth of knowledge and information to people trying to do what we're trying to do at our Trade Street area. Thanks. Thank you, sir. And I attended one about housing. Uh, the reason why, I'm, I printed it too, just in case anybody wanted to see it. But I went to one about planning for sustainable housing, and that was for, um, in cases, of looking for ways of helping homeless people because as populations grow they're looking for ways of sustaining them in some type of home but also helping people during these times to um, get housing but that was uh, part of that conference at the same time I did include I've got the other two conferences that I attended uh, one was uh, I was pointed to the National League of Cities Community and Economic Federal Development Committee and that meeting was held on Sunday. I included in your uh, packet the information from there. It was spent a lot of times, um, it was uh, com uh, council members, mayors, um, other people that were part of the committee. And this committee um, had a series of things that they talked about as far as looking at um, how important it is for us to be an advocacy for not just our state, but for all the things that all the states need. So. We talked about community and economic development, about energy and environment, finance, human development, information technology, public safety, transportation. And this was this happened on Sunday, and it was a three-hour Zoom meeting with a small group of people, but it was very informative. It also spoke to us in reference to the um, information that was going to be coming forth with American Rescue Plan Act. And what they did there was gave us talking points to talk to our legislators that were in Washington, D.C. So at the conclusion of that meeting, uh, the next four days were spent with that. Then it tied into Main Street. But the other part that I think is important is discussion of the economic recovery update from the National League of Cities. Uh, this conference from, seven, from the March 7th through 9th, the importance of that is the way they set it up. And because I was a member of that federal committee, on March the 10th, I actually was with, a, uh, there's six of us that met one-on-one -on -one with Congressman Burr. And during that opportunity, we were able to ask questions. He answered questions, um, and he spent a good, um, I guess, about 30, 45 minutes with us uh, by Zoom. Uh, and then he talked about, of course, he said that this $1.9 trillion uh, was the most Congress had ever appropriated in history. And he wanted to make sure that we got broadband. He was he just went through things that were important to him, but he did let us know that he was concerned about how we were going to pay it back. We then spoke to Senator Tillis at 11:30 on the the same on the 11th, and with Senator Tiz, uh, Tillis, uh, he talked about the way the money was being distributed across the United States. But then he talked about the fact that this one. Um, is more important than it has been before because the money actually will be distributed to the municipalities. So in the other COVID relief money, the other care package money, it went to the county or it went to the state and then they determined how it was distributed. In some cases and in some states, that money hasn't made it yet to where it was supposed to go because of the processes. Well now, this current money will be distributed directly to the cities, the municipalities. And there is, uh, I sent the link to the board. It's uh, officially unofficial, but it looks like in the case of Hope Mills, um, what, we're, what it's based on is per capita, and it's also based on um, the size of Hope Mills. But it looks like by 
uh, June 15th, we would get the first installment. And then before the year's out, we'd get the second installment. And, you know, looks like it's going to be $4,640,000 total. Uh, $2,320,000 $2, by June 15th. Those monies can be spent, and, and they talked about for transit, for broadband, uh, the I don't know that the limitations you can, uh, you know, I think roads, um, there's lots of things and lots of opportunities, but when those monies come, uh, they'll come directly to Hope Mills. Uh, every town is listed on that sheet. I don't have it with me, uh, but I did send the email when it was sent to me because uh, it was sent out to us, the members of that committee, as soon as they voted on it and as soon as the details were there. But just know that um, it looks like that we will benefit from this, and this is funds that we can put in place for those needs uh, that are above what we normally have. Did you need it? You got he, you printed it. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was so. Right now, that's the what they've what's printed, and if they said until it's actually <laughs> distributed. But it looks like over two million dollars we would get by June fifteenth. <coughs> and um, again, I think it was tomorrow. I have a Zoom conference with uh, Congressman Hudson, and that again is um, another plus from from being a part of this because it's it's actually going to be a two-on-one he will be there and, uh, and what he will do is um talk to us and answer questions and, and offer suggestions but um we were able to at least have those uh, times that we were listened to and we did talk about strategic progress and we talked about opportunity um and we talked about how we can minimize incentives and, and overhaul our community so good information all righty, next on our agenda is um, the manager's report. Do you have anything to add? Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, of course, the reminders uh, for upcoming meetings, um, staff comments. Okay, any other staff comments? And again, we welcome you, Mr. Zell. Uh, this is, um, we're earlier than we thought as far as getting to this point. We were worried that tonight was going to be lengthy, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're moving right along. Um, and then um, official comments, any official comments? Um, Melissa, yeah. thanks so much Thank you. for the service that you've given this town and for the work you've done for this board. Thank you. I want to be the first to congratulate you. Of course, I'm not, but I'd like to be on your retirement and I hope you have many, many wonderful, beautiful days ahead of you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dell, again, thank you for being with us. Um, we're not always this way, sometimes we're worse. <laughs> sometimes we're better. <laughs> sometimes we're better. Um, I've got a note from, um, what did I do with my glasses? Pocket. Uh, from the Historical Preservation Committee, where they want to thank each and every commissioner and the mayor for the work that you've done and allotting funds to them to work on the Thomas Oakman Chapel, uh, to include the, the bathrooms that they're going to be constructed there. Uh, they were tickled to death get, to get the news that that money had been budgeted to them. And on their behalf, I want to say thank you very much as I work with them as well. That's all from me, Madam Mayor. I'm quick tonight. Okay. Anything to Mr. Morley? I'm, I'm pretty good. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, all the staff and Melissa for um, reaching out and, and and starting trying to get something started with the uh, bike path again i do appreciate mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i'd love to see that i, I would mm -hmm. <clears throat> what else yeah i got a few things okay it's like to thank everybody that came tonight and again it was busy weekend on the golf on the Gulf View Greenway. The track was full of off and on.
But there was there was interesting dilemma about 4.30 on Sunday. Toward the end of the track, if you go all the way down before it takes a left to go down the, the slope some, there was a group of, uh, looked like family members that were flying some three or four foot jets and um, some drones. But that wasn't the interest. Although the air show was pretty cool. There was two Hope Mills police cars there. And there were some folks that were walking the track and, and I didn't know anything about it because I was like, okay. They were talking to each other that I guess some type of backpack had been found or abandoned or something on the golf course and that's why they were there. And the, the folks that saw all that action, they were really pleased that, that the police department was there. That was the takeaway, and that's what I wanted to share, is that as busy as it is, when something like that happens, and then our police department is there, and, I, and like I said, I don't know what's in the backpack. All I know is what I heard. I didn't even talk to the officers, but, but they were noticed. And finally, end of the road, Melissa. <laughs> Happy trails. Thank you. And just know that season five, uh, he's coming back for Yellowstone. Yeah. That's all, Madam Mayor. Okay. Anyone else? Melissa, <laughs> you already know how I feel, and I'm not going to elaborate on it, but you will be missing. You'll never be forgotten. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'd like to just say I have enjoyed working with Melissa as well, even though it's been a short amount of time. Um, there is a tremendous amount of progress and work that's being made, um, and so I'd like to thank all the town staff for that. Um, I would also like to thank Pastor Mathis and everybody that supported the prime movers in their COVID um, testing site, which was last Saturday. And I also got an inbox um, this weekend of an officer. Oh gosh, I think his last name is Cannon. That uh, a friend was showing me that he was outside playing basketball with her boys, and she really appreciated the engagement. I sent the picture to Chief, and I think he told me his name is Officer Cannon. I can't remember, but when something is positive, um, I think we should should note it. And I think there's a lot of great positive things going on in this community and in this town. And I think that that's it. Okay, um, one thing that I have that it's tentative, but I think it's gonna happen, and that's the mayor's youth leadership has chosen uh, March 27th from one to three to meet at Southview High School. And if, as far as I know, their uh, road adoption signs will be in, and they're going to, they've got parents and teachers that are gonna help supervise, but they're gonna clean from Southview to Biscuitville, um, both sides of the road. And oh. they've got the, they'll have the, uh, support of DOT, but I, I, as soon as it's official, I'll let Chief Acerdo know because I believe that, um, you know, that would be an area that I'd like to have somebody over there, but it's supposed to be March 27th, it's a Saturday from one to three, and they, they are gonna participate with the town on the town's cleanup. This is just done so they can make a big to-do over adopting the highway. So I'd like to, to include that. And also I'll let you know that, um, you may be retiring, but you're not going to be too far from me because I go over that way a lot. <laughs> so I don't ride horses very well, but I might just have to learn. <laughs> but I do appreciate everything. And um, at this time, do we have a motion? Yes, oh. ma'am. Motion to adjourn. No, no sir. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, oh, you got it. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to consult oh, with the oh. attorney to protect, to protect the attorney-client privilege for some pro we got another one. No, yeah, we got another one. Pursuant to oh, GS 143-318-11-A3 related to properly acquisition, 143-318-11-A5. Have a motion have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second, if you will. All please go to the back conference room, and we'll try to uh, make this quick and be right back. Oh. At this time, I'll call our meeting back to order. Do we have a motion? Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to seal the minutes of the closed session to such time as the release of the information will no longer frustrate the purpose of the closed session and further no action was taken. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed, do we have another motion? Motion to adjourn. 
Thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. We'll see yeah. you. You're welcome. See we you soon.